Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another Rome 2 Siege Battle for you today and this one is an insanely close one. This one comes down to the last unit and it's got lots of twists in it so definitely worth checking out till the end. Um, but yeah, I took part in this battle and along with three other players in a massive 4v4. Um, I'm playing as Syracuse um, and we are against uh, Kush, Iceni. Egypt and Carthage, while also having Carthage, Pontus, and Macedon on our sides. So, if you enjoy, then please remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment to show your support. Um, but yes, anyway, on with the battle. And uh, it looks like the first bits of attack we have is some cavalry moving out on the flanks. On uh, this side, we have my cavalry coming out. I have Mercenary Companion Cavalry and Hippias Lancers, along with some uh, Cappadocian Cavalry. These guys are just looking for a easy target to go for really. We're just gonna look for an easy target between Carthage and Kush. Kush does have an Archer General as well so where is he? There he is. Um, so you imagine that this is gonna be easy to take out with Cavalry uh, which is kind of what we're looking for to take out. On the other side we have uh, also we have Cavalry getting ready and set up to go. We have the Salian Cavalry, Carthaginian Cavalry all getting ready as uh, we the, to like attack and go out this out this gate here. And maybe harass Egypt, you know, slow them down a little. But um, so yeah, we'll s see what else is going on just quickly before it all kicks off. We uh, looks like we have. I'm hearing bombardment going on. I'm hearing. Is that coming on here? That might be here. No. Oh, well, it looks like going to bring tortoises up as well. So that's a good move to be fair as well. I mean, oh my gosh, that's actually a lot of <laughs> got a lot of those guys that already armor show to warriors. There's a great unit to be taking out with artillery. I'm not quite sure whose artillery that is. It might be Pontus's artillery. But here we go. Out the gate comes the Campanian Cavalry and Carthaginian Cavalry. And Thessalian Cavalry. Can't forget those Thessalians. But it does look like they're going to go straight in and just go for uh, Egyptian's Thorax Infantry down here. Royal Thorax Infantry to be precise. So, I mean, yeah, this is a really good target to go for. You can just attack this small unit that's down here and then... Uh, Force the rest off so you can just charge and kill this small amount of the men and then you just uh, Go from there and you whittle them down. But there you go So these two units have got off their towers and are attacking the Carthaginian Cav here Carthaginian Cav kind of getting a little bit caught out, but it's done okay Getting ready for a charge here though. We've got Macedon getting ready Companion Cavalry getting ready and here we go. This is gonna be nasty Nasty Yeah, that's pretty mad. I uh, Fortunately the bush got in the way of it, but uh, hey, that was pretty that's pretty nasty, and uh, Royal Thorax Swords, I mean, down a th down only five troops, it could be worse. I mean, they got their javis off on the uh, Companion Cavern as they fall back. Uh, they're really um, setting themselves up quite nicely here, but I mean, they're just bouncing or ping-ponging off units of the Cavalry. There's another good charge there from the uh, Carthaginian Cavalry. I can hear another charge. Oh, it's the companion cavalry coming in from the other side, sandwiching these guys in. They're getting, like, absolutely devastated. I mean, they're not losing many men, um, in fairness, just yet. I mean, this one's lost quite a lot. But, I mean, the Carthaginian cavalry needs to get out of here. It's not the greatest melee cavalry, only medium melee. It won't hold long against these, uh, these troops. Imagine being one of the, uh... Egyptian infantry down here. You're just like getting penned in by uh, cavalry. You have I seen bringing his cavalry over quickly. Heroic riders coming desperately around this corner to try and save him. Egypt's got no um, cavalry of his own by the looks of it. And he's not actually supporting, like he's got reserves all the way back in. He's just not supporting them. He's just going to let them, he's just going to condemn these four units of, uh, or five units of thorax swords really. Or royal thorax. It's even more than five. It's more like six. We have a little sneaky, uh, little like invasion over here that's going on so we have a uh, two units of uh, Libyan infantry and a mercenary noble fighter and an arch unit getting ready to come around here and they're gonna land on this tiny little bit of wall which you can land on um, Pontus is ready in sending up his troops to uh, defend it could be interesting we'll see what happens here this could actually uh, be huge for the attackers could it be if they win here it means that their defenders are gonna draw more troops away from their main defense um, we now have engagement on the front wall, on the front lines, I should say, and infantry. First infantry clash really between Kush 
and Lib uh, Libyan infantry of Carthage. I mean, they've got huge lines here. We've got Thorax swords ready as well. We've got archers. We've got plenty here ready. I mean, this is a great angle here for these archers. If they can get anything upon those walls, that is huge. What is upon that wall screen? Oh, it's um, ambushes, I want to say. Spear, spear band, yeah. Okay, so, um, I mean, that's a good target, actually, to go for with archers. I mean, I think uh, certainly Pontus might be going for that. I mean, he's not actually going for it yet. He's going for a heroic nobles, a better target, to be honest. Much better target. Um, but, yeah, it looks like Kush is probably going to just chop through these uh, Carthaginian troops. They are, I mean, they do have a lot of armor piercing, so uh, these living infantry, yeah, they're not going to have a fun time here. Not have a fun time at all. They've just got to hold them here, let the arch towers do the work and the archers and just see what happens here. I mean, but they're doing quite well. I mean, this could be huge, though, if they can knock down another wall here and flank around this uh, point, then that'll be huge. I mean, look at the Thorax swords throwing their spears, but wasting the spears. What are they doing? But yeah, so we've got swords, more swords ready. We've got these Thorax swords both positioned ready uh, for these two breaches to come through. We'll have to see what happens there. We've got plenty of reserves though as well. I was kind of expecting Carthage to come for me here, so I kind of was uh, had more and more reserves just set up here ready. But we're looking good on healthy troops. The cavalry for us yet to do anything either, which is interesting. But here we go. The wall's about to come down as I'm I'm just falling back my troops so they don't get hit by the uh, rubble. You can hear it. One more hit. There we go. And they, now we can look into the into the breach, and the dust will uh, disappear, and we'll find infantry in their place, in its place. Actually, no, we won't. <laughs> okay, here they come. You're a bit late. You ruined my little. Uh, what are you doing throwing javelins up there? It's not going to do anything. But yeah, you ruined my uh, little little bit there. Here we go. Infantry coming over the top of the breach and in. And they're throwing their javies in as well. And there we go. Now it's Thorax versus Libyans. Uh, I would say that Libyans are probably going to lose this ever so slightly. Just A, they're beaten up. Oh, actually, maybe not. Wow, look at that. They are forcing back the Thorax swords, though. I mean, they do have a lot of chevrons. They have two silver chevrons. That could be huge. Um, but I think since they're in the breach... And they're slightly surrounded. That could be uh, that could be a disadvantage. But okay, here you go. Armored Chota Warriors coming in. That's going to turn the tide of the battle. Uh, again, that armor piercing damage just available. We've also got Chota Warriors here fighting my Thorax Swords. I think the Thorax Swords can weaken that one. Um, Chota Warriors just aren't as good as armored, so that's just the case. Okay, over here on this side. So Mastodon is now engaging Egypt. We have some Thoros Spears fighting off uh, those Royal Thorax Swords that have been harassed by the cavalry and still is getting harassed it's going to be a cavalry charge here by the looks of it companion cavalry coming in for one more charge i don't know maybe i'm a charge after that where are they going oh here we go here we go not as a uh, not as good as i thought they kind of got caught up in a couple of infantry and kind of stopped their charge but there you go excellent and then more of Poor Thorax Swords, the Royal Thorax Swords coming in. There's just so many of them. And I mean, they're throwing their jabbies off the top there. It's a really good idea as well. And yeah, this Thorax Spear is not going to hold long. They'd be best trying to flank around these units and uh, doing work like that. I don't know. I mean, they've also got this breach to contain with, contend with as well, sorry. Um, and they've got Thorax Swords ready uh, against Royal Thorax Swords. So. Oh no, this is just normal. Just normal. Wow. Not enough royal, uh, too much royalty for Egypt. He's got to, he's got to backtrack. Anyway, uh, Pontus is looking really good. He's just making uh, square formations with his Thor of spears, holding uh, the back of the spear band, javying and uh, firing just missiles onto the top here, taking out a lot of heroic nobles, which are now off the walls. Actually, they are now flying down uh, these Pontic swords down here. Archer fire coming in. You can just see, like, this is amazing. Just look at this. You're fighting down here. you got the fighting going on on the top of the walls as well. Fighting's literally happening everywhere at the moment. To be expected doing a 4v4. There's so many armies on the battlefield. 
There will be. Chop them down, Pontic boys. I'm kind of routing for the... Uh, routing? Rooting for the uh, defenders because they always have the disadvantage. And I also played as the defenders, so it's a bit biased. But, um... Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, let me know in the comments who you're rooting for. Are you rooting for the attackers or the defenders? Kush now also breaking through this uh, choke point here. Kush seems to be fine everywhere. He's got Shadow Warriors here. Um... They are actually doing okay. Again, those Pontic Swords are actually doing okay. I think the Chevrons are helping. They're also bringing uh, a lot of infantry around this way. The Chosen Sword Band. I don't know why they're getting them up onto this wall. I mean, in fairness, they, they went down as they like the heroic nobles. They uh, are coming up and then coming down this way. It's kind of a bit of a strange decision, but fair enough. Um, but yeah, you see here we've got mercenary noble fires going in. They're already getting chopped up by these uh, Shota warriors. It's just. And archers, jeez, that archer fire is devastating. But I mean, this is a bold play by the defense to hold this huge choke point. Um, it's slowly becoming unattainable. There are less and less troops uh, to hold this choke point by the second. And the attackers are just able to throw in more currently. They've got plenty of show to warriors left. Ugh. Oh dear. Not looking good at all. I mean, now we have living infantry over here. We have a heavy siege tower. They're actually really burning these siege towers. I mean, which is a really good thing. Like, over here, um, I didn't forget to mention it, but, um, like, they were harassing these siege towers. This one even didn't get to the wall, I like to just say. So, I mean, the cavalry over here probably did its job really well. It slowed these towers down, meant less choke points coming up, which he actually could have probably defended the wall because of this. Um, these siege towers are burning now. Um, they are still usable, but like, it's the risk. Would you risk using it? Actually, did this one even get... Oh, this one did get to the walls. Just can't see it through the plume of smoke. But, I mean, the same thing on the other side. The other ones are now burning. Uh, I don't think that we slowed them down at all, but... They are burning. Um, while we're uh, over here as well, we'll just have a quick look and we'll cut. If it will move, if my, uh, <laughs> and we have Syracuse and Pontus trying to uh, either snipe out this general over here for the heroic riders, or go for the Carthaginian one himself. He's actually making himself very open. That was a that's still a viable option. I mean, there's just a lot of infantry around him, so would you really want to risk it? Probably not. But I think we were still trying to get to Kush's general as well. I was insistent. On getting the Kush's general because he's just got an art, it's an arch unit, and Kush is the, by far and away the danger, most dangerous attacker here. He's got the most, he's got the most units that could take out like our heavily armored ones. But look at that, it's beautiful, beautiful. Nothing better than men cutting down each other on the orders of a few men who don't like each other. But I mean, yeah, I, I'd say uh, Egypt and Macedon are very much, uh, well, they're locking heads here and they're looking like they're going to just knock each other out. I mean, Macedon doesn't look, I was going to say Macedon doesn't look too strong. We've still got some reserves, um, luckily. Oh, this is huge as well. Um, so Carthage has actually forced Pontus out of this uh, this little rear, rear gate bit. So, I mean, it's a shame they can't like send more forces around. Actually, could Egypt send more forces around? No, he can't. That's a shame. Shame it's not like a causeway across here. Um, but yeah, so... I mean, this could now be a problem for Pontus. Because I guess... Well, they've now got to probably put more troops in there. There's a fresh unit of noble fighters. There's still Libyan infantry. And there's archers. And those archers will probably beat uh, those uh, those Easterns. And the Pontic swords probably will get bested by those uh, mercenary nobles. But I mean... Yeah, so this could be a little bit of a problem. Not, like, huge, but it means it's just, like, the defenders are going to send more troops away from this front line. Which, I mean, especially this front line over here is requiring more and more troops by the second. Like, look how many units Carthage has put in here. And I've got a unit in here as well. Just trying to hold back all this Kushite stuff.
tell you one thing, it's looking devastating in there. Looking absolutely devastating. And yeah, Carthage has got most of his stuff plugged up ready. I mean, Pontus might need to send some stuff across. Oh, he did actually go for a charge on the general. Oh, he didn't get many kills, only got two. But he did actually get away with it. He got a nice little kill on that. I'm uh, bringing my cavalry back round. I think I'm just looking for options. At this point, it's pretty tired, so I'm just going to probably move it pretty slowly. I'm just going to get it back into position and just rest it. Oh my gosh, artillery now in here as well. That's huge. Where's that coming from? Oh, that's Kush's artillery, which he's literally got just one perfectly placed through there. It's only oh, I thought he only had one left. But yeah, he's firing literally at my uh, corner here. He's firing at my pikes. It's a really good angle to get. Oh, that's, yeah, very nice, actually. Now I only hate my pick top lights, but that's fine. He can, I mean, it's not really fine. I don't really want him to do this. Just kind of hoping that he runs out of ammo soon. But my pikes are not going to hold this line. Um, and I'm just going to kind of just go into the side of these uh, in, of this infantry and just poke away at them. Um, I'd say over here, Karth is just kind of just coming into what I wanted him to do. He's uh, really just attacking with a couple of, like, units on their own. They're just getting... Focus down, really. And that's about it. It's unfortunate for them. Um, and then back on this side, I'd say, let's see how Egypt and Masson are doing. I'd say, I'd say Egypt's winning. Masson's not got masses left. Um, he's got, like, cavalry all the way back. He's still got companion cavalry, like, fairly fresh. He's got foot companions, and he's got more foot companions. He actually spent a lot of money with his pikes, and um, may have wanted to bring a bit more... Uh, Elite infantry and bring maybe like thorax pikes, but yeah, here we go. So we have a uh, royal peltast fight in royal peltasts, I think. Yeah, that is uh, very nice. And then we've what we've we got here. We've got more royal thorax against royal peltast. So I mean, royal peltast good, good unit to bring as uh, well, just as any Hellenic faction that can, because uh, they've got plenty of javis and they've got. Lots, uh, lots and lots of armor as well. So they're pretty solid. And then look at this. There's guys back here throwing javies. These guys are throwing javies, I think, all the way at the guy. At, oh no, I was thinking they were throwing javies, but they're not. They're uh, Rodian slingers. That's a really good target to take out as the Rodian slingers. Take out these thorax swords. They're just blobbing up here easily. That's very, very good. Very good play by uh, Egypt there. And also now we've got on uh, Egypt's side. We've now got these heroic riders. To help him out. To try and break through. Stop any harassment from cavalry. Which Masson's still got. Be interesting to see. Whether that helps out over here from Egypt. But I mean. Yeah both of these sides. Look like they're just going to run each other into the ground. But I'd say Egypt might do it first. Egypt's still got a bit of infantry left. Um, Masson looks like he's scraping the barrel a little bit. I mean, he's bringing up another fresh unit of Royal Peltas now. Look at this. These guys are literally just throwing javies at each other. Oh, no, they're not. There's a unit down here. Oh, I'm so blind. There's another th Royal Thorax. Okay, who's throwing javies? These guys. Oh, they're not throwing javies. Again, it's Cretan Archers. So much javy throwing. I am expecting it's javy throws because it's Royal Peltas everywhere. But yeah, so here we go. This is huge now. I mean, you're seeing Shota Warriors. are going to try and just break through this little bit here. And they're going to try and flank around. This choke point is starting to become very, very unattainable. And I've got uh, I've got archers up here now. I don't actually know if these guys have got ammo. I presume they're out of ammo. But these sacred band, we've got so much sacred band up here now. And they're just trying to hold the line. And we just like, anything, at this point we were like, this is a real problem. We're, like anything we're throwing up here just gets beaten back. Um, so picked hot plates, and now sending up more picked hot plates, more sacred band. Look at this just huge column of troops getting ready to come up. Kush still has probably a fair amount of units. He's still got a lot of armor shotels. Um, sadly, these two units are stuck on the towers. They wouldn't get off the towers to save their lives. Like, a few are getting, like, trying to go off. But, uh, yeah, they're not having fun. They're just going to stay hidden on the towers. They're protecting themselves from the, uh, the doom that is the cavalry that's lurking around. Oh, look at that archer volley coming in. That's very nice. 
onto the Kushite forces below. And we've got some uh, Iceni forces down here. That's nice. So that's uh, Mercenary Cretan Archers from, well, from uh, Carthage's time. If you're unsure which Carthage force is which, you just look at the like the blue outline against the red outline. That's just the way to work it out. Um, and who's attacking, who's defending, that generally works. So yeah, yellow and blue outline around the uh, thing, that's defenders. And if it's red, then it is attackers. But the sacred band's got to waver and go. Um, and this picked top light unit's been flanked by a small unit of show to warriors. So this is huge. Um, actually, it's not even picked. It's not even picked top lights. It's thorax swords. Oh no, there is some picked top lights in there as well. But still, uh, whatever was in here, it's getting flanked now. And any unit doesn't like getting flanked. And pikes are coming in though. The pikes are pushing in hard, pushing back these uh, armor show warriors. This is huge. This could really change the favor uh, in this uh, like area here. I mean, they're um, not losing many men. They're just getting pushed back. But here you go. So we're getting up some uh, pick top lights, sending them in. And that's going to plug up the gap ever so slightly. I mean, it's sort of like a weird L shape. No, it's not even an L shape now. It's like a... Yeah, I guess it sort of is like an L shape. Backwards L almost. And then that's the, like that bit there. I don't know, with the pikes at the top. That's just a weird... Actually, then it's a J. It could be a J, couldn't it? Anyway, we don't need to talk about what le uh, letter it is or defense, just that they are still defending. Just about. But I mean, over here, Macedon's uh, only just about holding himself. He's, I don't know where the uh, like the, the rest of the unit is, but uh, yeah, the Royal Peltas in here, they're beating back some other Royal Peltasts. But I mean, yeah, Egypt's still got like Glacian Royal Guard. He's still got more Royal Peltasts. He's got archers, he's got pikes. Hmm, it's going to be close. And now there's the cavalry over here. But I mean, also. We've now got this, which is to contend with. The Pontic Swords are only just about holding back this stuff. I'm about to send in some picked top lights of my own. So I've had to send them away from the front line. Which is a great play by Carthage. Because that's exactly what the defenders, uh, uh, the attackers wanted to do. Just draw away... Um, a few units. Like, pick top lights. One pick top light unit, that can be huge. We might need that to hold back Kush. But no, now we've got to send it to go and deal with two units over here, which are pretty battered up. But I don't think this Pontic Sword unit is going to do enough. I've also sent some Slingers over to get the support, just so we can mop these guys up quickly. It's probably a waste of resources, but I just didn't want to, like, be around here for too much longer. Also, there's this Archer unit, so that's why I sent the Slingers over, because... Just to contend with them. Um, because we might need to. So yeah, I've got Mercenary Bear Lake Slingers here. We'll see what damage we can do. See what we can do. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is uh, looking a bit of a concern here now. I mean, now we've got East Eastern Archers coming in. Hold the line. Presumably out of ammo. I mean, the Pikes are actually doing a great job here. They have actually pushed back this Libyan infantry. They've got lost quite a lot of men, though. But look at the carpet dead here already. I don't know what formation the Pikes are doing now. That's a weird formation that's not going to help. But I mean, yeah, this, uh, and this, look at this carpet as well. You can see where it's just been pushed back ever so slowly. And at just what cost? I'd say there's a lot more, I'd say there's a lot more, uh, Libyans down there and, than Kushites. Or Libyans and Carth other Carthaginians. But yeah, this is looking bad now. I'm having to send up more and more just of my own stuff and I'd, to be honest, looking back at it, I'm not sure why I'm still sending up stuff. Like, this is just not feasible to hold this any longer. And now I've got pikes up here. African pikemen, I think, coming up. Yeah. This is a, a huge problem over here. I was literally saying to uh, Pontus, we need to start sending troops this way. We're going to need them. Um, but also, Egypt's starting to be a huge problem. He's not got masses left, but he's going to beat Macedon. Um, we now have a big cavalry engagement in, over here because the heroic cavalry was just going to otherwise be running rampant. So my cavalry, which should be really fighting outside the walls, is now fighting inside the walls in a weird mess on top of a bit of a hill, a bit of a slope.
Chop them down, boys. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's quite a lot of dead over here as well. I mean, obviously, these Macedon on Egypt to run each other into the ground. We now have Carthaginian pikes are just getting focused down by uh, Cretan archers on top of the wall. But they are pushing back these royal peltas, but they're not killing any. We're not killing enough. Cause it, oh, actually, oh no, yeah, there is only pikes going that way. I was thinking there's pikes going the other way as well. Yeah, you can see this. It's just not like this is so open for the pikes. Far too open. They've got to get archers of their own. Yeah, to focus down um, the archers on the walls. So well played there by uh, by uh, Carthage. And we setting up another pike unit. I don't think this is a good idea. It's, I was all that, he, that we had here. I had like a tiny unit of Thorax swords I could send over. But um, like it wasn't working the first time. So it's not going to work the second time. It's just kind of what I'm thinking. Really Macedon's got to send over his hot plights and his foot companions. Like, And, and it's... Kind of bad that it shouldn't be Carthage sacrificing his, but Carthage is going to need his pikes to deal with the Carthaginian pikes over here in Kush. It should really be Macedon that's having to deal with his own issues and like sorting out that area. But well played and uh, by Carthage, like being a good teammate and helping out. At least maybe Macedon could send his pikes over here help out because we're going to need them. Those foot companions would be huge right now. Some elite pikemen would be huge. But the fight over the carpet of bodies goes on, and uh, I mean, I've got this tiny unit of pikes still. Actually, it's not a tiny; it's 91 men. Not gonna, they're not gonna challenge it though, so that's a good idea. Oh, am I hearing the artillery again? Oh, the artillery is now inside the walls. So Carthage is an onager, and we have. Uh, oh yeah, as you see there, pikes getting focused down again. I don't think I was aware of this just yet. I think I was dealing with something over on the far side. But yeah. Oh my gosh. Getting some devastating hits. I just hate myself for seeing this now. Yeah, there you go. I see it and I move them. But not before they've lost like well over 30 men. That body, that carpet body just keep, keeps on growing. This is just futile as well because we've not got any pikes up here of our own. I really should have sent those pikes in to combat like the African pikes instead of retreating them. But I guess they live to say, uh, see another day, or live to fight another day. That's that's the saying. How did I mess that up? Heroic nobles are here, getting absolutely surrounded by Pontic swords. Not really looked upon. Oh my gosh, though! As I say that, like the surrounding ends because the heroic nobles just jabby them to death. Um, can Pontus do the same? He's got pikes here. Slowly push these pikes forward. Whoa. Oh, that's what they'd be saying if they were marching forward. I'm sure of it. What are these bronze shield pikes or just normal? Just normal pikes, wow. And they phalanx. They need to push forward a little bit more. Keep edging forward. Yeah, just poking away, like killing the la the yeah, the stragglers. A little bit more. Poke. Poke. Oh no, definitely was doing the right thing and just moving forward ever so slightly. But look at them, they're so bloodied up. Like, look at that guy, he's so bloodied up. He's got COVID in, COVID in tomato sauce. But yeah, there's uh, oh, actually, well, there's two units in this. Chosen Sword Band and uh, Heroic Nobles. And they're fighting back to back right now. But I mean, I see these are actually nearly out as well. So that's huge for the defenders as well. I mean, but I see he's got a lot of good, strong infantry left. He's not got any archers, but he's got good infantry. Um, Kush. Basically committed everything now. These two units obviously being in it are uh, being stuck is a bit of an issue, but yeah um, that, That's that's their fault. <laughs> their fault for getting stuck. We have Royal Kushite uh, archers left. We still have uh, Kushite pikes, but I mean they're all fully committed as well in this choke point um, Carthage is actually probably looking the better of the two like attacks over here. He's got mercenary noble fighters He's got Afri African pikes still and Carthaginian hot plates But uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Just have to see whether he can use those reinforcements to uh, his advantage. Oh, you, we missed out on the elephant charge. I do apologize. But I mean, yeah, the elephant's charging here, and we try to scare off uh, the cavalry, which I think we successfully did. We broke the uh, heroic nobles, or whatever they're called, like the cavalry. Heroic riders. Um, 
But and my carry is now free to do what it wants, but it's got a cavalry. It's got a pike line here, which it can't get past. So I'm going to send up my bail X slingers to first focus these guys down, and then we're also going to try and break through elsewhere. But I mean, the, yeah, the elephants are out of control now, sadly. Big sad. Well, I'm about to clean up as well over here. This fight. I mean, these uh, picked hot plates are getting slightly picked up. Well, picked off by uh, arch towers, but. They're going to kill this Korean archer unit pretty easily. And there we go. Then the rear force is dealt with. Um, ever so slowly. So it took me and Pontus to, uh, to do the deed. And yeah, these guys are just getting absolutely messed up by the, uh, by the pick top plates with their spears. Poking out from behind their shield line. But, I mean, slowing them down here, that's uh, by Cre the Cretan Archers, that's not a bad idea. Pick top plate's going to take a couple of casualties from those Arch Towers, but not too many. Back on this front, uh, still not looking great. Still not looking great at all. We've got li more living infantry fighting here. I've got, like, just a assortment of archers and beating up pick top plates holding these guys back now. It is really coming to, like, sort of code red sort of levels. I'm setting up more pick top plates. I don't know why. Like, I really should just be calling it a day. I still have plenty of picked up light reserves, it seems. I've got, like, two here, another one here. Got my general who's a picked up light unit. Got that one all the way back in the distance. So, I mean, I'm not quite scraping the barrel yet, but it's, it's getting close. It is getting close. Um, but, yeah, now they're unfortunately just focusing down my calves, so... Which I've just left there to its own devices. Actually... Just by the arch towers, just there. It's just focusing them down. It's a bit of a shame, but it is what it is, really. It's, they kind of just have to hold this flank just so Egypt can get round. Because I've got to get this picked up by unit. I think I'm sending this unit all the way back to here, or should be at some point, when it's not getting focused down by archers. Which is, again, a bit of a poor move on my part. I was not, I probably was do, doing something over here. I was still so fixated. But I mean, yeah, the artillery's firing in again, trying to hit these quick top lights. That's not a bad hit. Um, actually, it didn't hit anything. Wow. But yeah, here we go. It's finally gone. This choke point is finally at an end. It's literally coming down to this two units. Actually, no, not even that. Just the one unit picked hot plates. This is all that's holding this all back. That's insane. Bravo, you sirs. Fight to the end. Don't give them an inch. Even though you're surrounded and you, you've given them a lot of inches, really. But, um, but yeah, so I mean, this final defense is gone. But look how many bodies there are here. This is insane. This is one of the biggest body power-ups I've ever seen. Now we've got artillery just rolling over all the bodies, mushing them up into jelly. That's a horrible thought. And there's another big body pile here, to be honest, as well. That's just another carpet. Almost joins up with this one. Actually, it probably does. Jeez, it's insane. But yeah, so now Kush moves on and Carthage move on to the next defense, which is here. Got picked hot plates ready. We've got Pontic swords. We've got archers back here focusing down the pikes. But I mean, yeah, I mean, Pontus is looking really good. He's nearly finished off uh, Iceni, so we can then move. Pontus over to come and help with us because we really need the help to deal with uh, Carthage right now. I mean, I see these generals a long way away. Not got any chance of getting him. Got Egypt's general coming around for some reason. I guess because Egypt knows he's out. Oh, we have as we go on beyond it. Yeah, Egypt's looking out to be honest. Now he's just about to get. He's about to get surrounded with his pikes. Um, the cavalry here. I actually got into a bit of a side charge and somehow I'm still losing this fight. I guess because they then are now charging into the front, which is just stupid of the cavalry. It was a bit of a stupid thing they were doing, but uh, I'm now just going to send up... Oh, pick top lights. Okay, well, I'm sending up pick top lights. Couldn't deal with this. Um, they've got elephants here that could go into the rear of this pike unit. That would certainly do a lot of damage. I think they are just about to do that. Um, but yeah, so we're just, met, just um, cleaning up the last few units here. We've got Korean archers just ready to die. It's like deja vu, but this time it's just Macedon instead of uh, Syracuse and it's Egypt instead of Carthage. But it's the same thing. Korean archers will die to hot plates just the same. I think these are normal hot plates, they're not quite picked hot plates. Yeah, peh. 
These are not picked hot plates, the best of the best. This is just peasanty hot plates. But yeah, we now have the uh, companion, uh, we have the general of Masson going out with his magnificent companion cavalry. He's going to try and uh, get down, hunt down the uh, Egyptian general by the looks of it. He's very tired against the fresh general. This is uh, only going to end in one way. It's going to end up in a fight. But the fight could end into. I think. I think. Uh, Marston has it. Companion carries so much nasty, nastier. Oh, yeah. Companion carries some of the nastiest carry in this. Uh, in this game, for Ptolemy, it carries good as well. But I don't think on a one-on-one, -on -one they've. Uh, they've got the advantage. But I mean the mass. Oh, that's huge. Heroic nobles though coming in. And Marston's having to fall back. For Ptolemy, it carry was losing that slightly. If um. I seen he hadn't turned up. I think that was curtains for that general. Still could be. He's actually going to chase the companion cavalry. That's a bold move. And uh, yeah, and the heroic nobles going to turn around. Oh dear, e Egypt might lose his general here. Egypt might lose his general. Seventy versus sixty. Numbers would say uh, Masson should win that. But he is without an army now. So does it really matter? Probably not. Uh, Macedon and both Masson and Egypt can kind of just run around with their generals and do whatever. Because this is literally what they've all they've got left um, of their armies. Masson's got ever so slightly got a few units, but it's not like it's gonna. Well, it might, it might clinch the victory. Don't know. Might need those few units, so maybe he shouldn't be charging his general in so rashly. But he is actually winning that fight like very easily. It shows the, just the power of companion cavalry. These for Ptolemaic cavalry, just no match, no match. Yeah, here we go. The final unit of heroic nobles is coming all the way around here to try and support this attack but this is literally where it's now going to come down to it's going to come down to here in this fight um, for these two choke points really and we've got a big fight going on here look at this I found this quite funny we've got like two lines of pikes just holding uh, and just like poking each other then we've got like swords just fighting out in the middle it's kind of quite funny just like they're in no man's land just holding but there you go so the African pikemen moving forward, and I think they're, um, I think they're slowly killing off my pikes. But yeah, it's a fresh unit, and they're slowly just killing them off. Like this is, I did not know what was going on here. He just gave the attack order. He's just po poking, poking, and massacring these guys. It's so frustrating. And this silver chevron as well. It's annoying, but yeah, this is a small unit, so really I should be winning that. But no, no chance. And here we go. I think I'm now giving the order to go back and they, they're poking their way back. And they're going to slowly kill off these African pipe. No, maybe not. <laughs> still still dying. Wow. Uh, may have an issue there. Here we go. Now the order's been given. And they go in. And they're going to start to kill those pikes. A small unit. But I mean, I lost so many. I lost over 50 men. or over, Probably over 60. There's no real reason to. I had a bit of a poor game in some way, in some departments. I just didn't give them the orders that they needed to do. Like the pikes, for instance, it was a poor one. Pikes were uh, a bit, uh, a bit detrimental, I'd say, in my use today. And same again here. I moved them forward a bit, and now the Kushite uh, shows warriors are in here, and they're going to just chop these guys down. So I've kind of lost this pike unit. It was a poor, poor decision by me. By sending in Pontic Swords to support and uh, probably allowing me to get my pikes out. <laughs> that man is annoying. Well, kill him, I'd say. That, you've got the perfect scenario now to deal with any annoying men. Um, over here, this is not good as well. I have uh, my pick top plates just trying to fight African pikes, which isn't going anywhere. You can see there's a bit of a body pile going on already. Not much I can do about that. I've just got to hold. Um, I mean,. I've actually, I think I was being told to pull back because there's pikes ready here. But I just didn't. <laughs> I just didn't listen. And didn't do it. It was a bit of a stupid decision. I, yeah, here we go. Now I do it. I think I was uh, too fixated on sorting out my, my own pikes or something like that. I don't know. But I've got a cavalry now going out the wall. And I think I'm going to go around and surround uh, the attack here. I actually, where's Mastodon's general? Oh, he's there. Okay, he's brought him back inside. Okay. Yeah, they've got plenty of men left, plenty of reserves, all blobbed up here. Got heroic nobles, we've got... We've got, yeah, just a lot. Just a lot. Heroic nobles, show to warriors, living infantry, noble cavalry, we've got so much artillery just to top it off. 
This artillery, if he's got ammo, is huge. That's huge, actually, if that has ammo. Like, that could fire anywhere into these reserves. It could hit the elephants, which we really need to keep alive. I think that's the only reason the balance power is, like, as it is. And here we go, foot companions. Now we have some real elite pikes coming up. These will do some... They, these guys won't mess around. Yeah, these Shota Warriors die on the pikes now. The pikes of Syracuse and the pikes of uh, Macedon. But I'm down to 39 pikes. So sad. So sad. I don't know what uh, the general here for... Well, I see what he's doing. He's just kind of just stood here doing his thing. I mean, he could charge into a nice pike line if he fancied it. Go on, I dare you. Charge into this nice pike line. Oh no, he's going to fall back. If we had some artillery, this would be huge. If someone actually had brought like a mobile piece of artillery instead of a wall artillery. Like this huge blob here, devastating. That that kills everything in this area. Like I see look at this blob that's being formed here. I see he's blobbing up nicely as well. If we had ammo, just even archer ammo, like these guys here or these uh Cretans. That's 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 big. But I mean we've now got archers going on up over here. I don't know if they're out of ammo or what. They're trying to flank hard anyway, and they're just getting killed off by these Pontic Swords. Um, there's now actually infantry coming across, so we actually are going to see a bit more, more of a determined flank to try and deal with the issue. Pontus is now having to send back some reserves. So good play there by Carthage. He's trying to open up another front. Um, they certainly have the troops to do it, and they certainly should. I actually... <laughs> this is Here we go. So this is confirmed that they can't come off the towers. Because I charged my men in. Um, to go and see whether I could kill these uh, Shota Warriors. And they just won't come off the wall, uh, off the towers. They just really love those towers. Right, same over here. I mean, these ones, <laughs> look at this. They're throwing javies into, this, into their own siege tower. I'm sure that's not helping. Oh, that guy actually got, got pretty nasty, though. He got about four javelins in him. So, yeah, that, that's not that's a bit of an issue. But we can, uh, we can... We're quite happy with that. Two units of armor Shota Warriors, two extra would be devastating. Kill them all. But I mean, yeah, I mean, these Kushai Pikes are actually not Kushai Pikes, these Kushai uh, infantry is having a bit of an issue here now. It's finally breaking as well. How many men did I have left? 22 before it broke. And this Pikes nearly finally gone, so that's good. Uh, but now the offensive has started on this front. And it looks like. This Heroic Noble unit, was that actually the only Heroic Noble unit that they had? No, they have another, okay. I must have been a depleted one. But we do have a, now a uh, an attack over here from Carthage. He's again trying to use the walls to get another flank. Going really good play. And the elephants are being mobilized over here. So that's another interesting decision uh, by, the, by the defenders. I mean, this is probably the better area to use them. Possibly, I mean, because Kush has got pikes up here now, and they've got African ballista and all sorts. I mean, I guess they could have actually punched all the way through to those those uh, ballistas. But, I mean, the pikes aren't even set up properly, and they, those foot companions aren't set up properly either. Um, but, yeah, the, the elephants could certainly go into... Certainly into here. Could go into here, certainly, could do a lot of damage. Interesting to see what they do. These pikemen here, what they they just, you know, reforming, showing that they can reform in in cool formations. They're actually gonna fall back. Oh, this is risky by uh this is risky. This is risky. The elephants are really close as well to that pike line. They're in here. They're gonna take out these Libyan infantry, or try to. Like, imagine coming off the walls and just being met with an elephant. You just kind of go, okay, I'm dead then. Like, there's just no way you're winning that fight. I've got uh, picked up pikes in there to support them, so they're not just fighting on their own. But there you go. 
Oh, no. The archers are now coming in with their fire ammo. And, uh, yeah, this is a concern. The they're stampede, the flaming shot, all big negative debuffs now. And uh, they're starting to... Not starting to drop, but they're... Uh, they need to get out of there, certainly. They're um, out of control. of the trampling. And now this has caused us to lose this fight here. So it's now in favour of Carthage, which is frustrating. And they're still out of control. And look at this. They're just going to charge into pikes. That is devastating. That is annoying. And this is such a huge unit. We need this for our last stand. Like, these elephants are going to be huge. And now they're running down this pike unit. And uh, my teammate who was playing as uh, Pontus was just so upset. He just saw this unit of pikes and just was like, this was a fresh unit of pikes. It's already down to 50, less than that. Now they're charging into the uh, African pikes, which is just not going to end well at all. Pikes against uh, elephants, only real one, only one real winner. And it's the pikes. And I guess people that hunt elephants. Because there's so, so much ivory up for, up for grabs now, which is awful. Ivory trade is a big no-no. Yeah, so it does look like this choke point, or these choke points over here are now very, very much uh, compromised. And, well, with the death of the elephants and the death of the pikes that was holding this line, now the cavalry can get round, and so much more can get round. There's now um, archers here. I mean, the Baelix thing is trying to hold back these, or shoot these pikes down, but it's just not going to be enough. You're not going to break all these units with a few slinger boys. Taking out the Ice Eden's General, though, might be a good idea. We've got a Pontic Swords coming up there, now having to transfer over here to stop this, uh, the tide. And then we've got the General as well. I remember to say more pick top lights round. It's close. It's close. It's stressful. It's stressful for me to watch now and imagine what it was then. Like It, it was awful. Um, but yeah, there my pikes break just like that. They're gone. We're falling back our last uh, few reserves. Oh my gosh, the foot companions of the retreat, though. Yeah, we're falling back, and we're going to fall back into this um, square, almost. Our main capture point's all the way over here. It's uh, somewhere, yeah, it's like here. So we're actually not defending our main capture point, which, to be honest, it's not very defensible. It's got three ways in, uh, maybe four. We're probably better holding here. Denying them only one way, and I'm keeping some. I'm throwing archers in just to slow them down so the pikes can get set up. Falling the pike, uh, the archers back now, or one of them is. The Pontic ones are back. But yeah, and look at this. The, the floodgates are open. Egypt has his general in here, with Ptolemy, Cav. We have the Iceni general in here. Where's the goddamn Macedonian Cav when we need it? Yeah, when did Macedon's general just go? He just disappeared. What could do with him now is to run down all this cavalry. Because he is the superior cavalry. But yeah, we're running back these Pontic Swords, running back these picked top lights. They actually allow us to get most of them back. They don't really give up too much of a chase. Which is uh, kind of good of them, I guess. Honourable in a way, that allowing us to fall back uh, a little bit. I mean, it's just the uh, Iceni General, which is a big risk, I guess. Because there is still a few units of Iceni knocking about. Oh, there's, uh, it, and it's the Egyptian cav, okay. Egypt doesn't matter if he loses his general. It's done. He's finished. But yeah, here you go. Two units of Kushite Ka uh, uh, Pike, sorry. Both fresh. Or fairly fresh. And then we have uh, African Pikes. Oh no, they're not African Pikes. They're just like hot plates. But even still, it's a fresh unit coming up. Uh, and we have African Pikemen over there on that side. That's an issue. So much Pike stuff left. Um, right now, I'm saying attackers are going to win this. Looking just like the numbers. That's actually a great shot, though. Look at that. Beautiful. Kushite troops with palm trees. What a great combo. Fighting around the lions. Going to see them. Hopefully, we need we need them to come to life and uh, help us out right now. But we have uh, the foot companions holding. They're actually not even set up properly. That's the saddest thing. There's like 60 of those guys left. We needed those uh, elite pikes. Do their bit. Now I'm going to send in those Pontic swords. Hold the line. Where is Macedon's general? I swear he was still alive, but no. Apparently not. We have noble cavalry left. We still have Carthage's general. 
We have all the other generals as well. My general's going to be soon mobilized on the front line. I'm just trying to find a good gap for him to be used. This is not a bad area here to attack this uh, pike unit on the side. It actually is winning though still. The general is uh, also winning. Shame. We need to attack these guys on the flank somehow. Or just javy them hard. If Pontus has any javies le left, please use them now. But it doesn't look like it's the case. We've got Libyan Peltas and we've got more. We've got the Oranger coming up. This thing's still not out of ammo. I've been firing at my pikes all day. Holding the line, but I don't think we've got enough. I don't think we've got enough to hold. Um, Pontus General's now in there, and he's losing decisively against Mercury Noble Fires and Late Carthaginians. We've got to break these pikes like these pikes hard. And here we go. They uh, they fall. They bring this unit forward. I charge into the side with my general in a moment, and this is going to be how we're going to get this pike unit. It doesn't help that the cavalry's charging through those own pikes as well. That's going to disturb the formation. And there you go. I'm. Uh, not going to get many kills with it, but I'm going to get some. That's the thing. We're going to just whittle them down a little bit. And there you go. The Kushite Pikes are falling back. As is the general. Well, the general's not falling back. He's just he's falling back into my general. If that's even a thing. But, uh, yeah, he's now actually... He's pretty stuck in there. Oh, but he's going to... No, he's got, he can get out of there. He's also a lot of men, though, doing it. Rescue move. But now, Kush isn't set up properly. He's, we've charged in here. In fairness, um, but we can flank around the sides here now. Flank around the sides and we can get this uh, pike unit. I don't know where the other one's gone. Oh, the other one just broke like that? What? It just broke. Didn't even see that happen. Um, I presume this Pontic Swords unit broke it? I don't know. It just it must have died here on this front line. I don't know. Confusion 100. But yeah, this uh, pike unit now is just... I don't know. I'm just trying to circle it, get around it, circle it, and uh, attack it on any flank possible. And here you go. But now, now is what the plan is coming to place. Now, Carthage's Cav can get a good rear charge onto this Pike unit. Oh, look at that! Hopping over the hills, hopping over the lumps, as like the noble cavalry for both sides come in, charging into mine, and also charging the pikes and that's them good night Vienna those pikes are gone and that is the last pike unit on this side we have to deal with we still have pikes here to deal with though we have African pikes coming in um, the general form Carthage is also now wavering this is insane look how close it is um, I'm now gonna say it's in favor of the defenders because I mean if they could get these two units off the wall though that would be huge but they can't But, I mean, Kush lost his general. There's no generals left for the attackers. They've all lost them. They're now down to just, like, their bare bones. Heroic Nobles winning over there. No surprise. Here we go. Mercy Noble fires. Can they... They need to break this unit quickly. Just can free up the general. Oh, and I kind of missed that charge. It wasn't a great charge, actually. All fighting in these bushes down here, aren't we? The Onagers, like, I presume the Onager crew got massacred somehow, somewhere along the line. Just had the audacity to wield their Onager up this close. Madman. And there you go, Lake Chaos, the Junior uh, Hot Plates being surrounded. I'm having to send, I sent in my, uh, small unit of picked Hot Plates. I was trying to just harass these guys. They're not quite set up properly, so I'm kind of inside the lines. Still really close though, and there you go, Pontus' general is breaking, and Pontus has now uh, compromised the situation, and he's broken over there, we've now got Heroic Nobles freed up, I break here, so many twists, this is literally what it's down to, is about three units, this unit here is stuck, this hot plate unit, we were so annoyed, it's stuck in combat, well not stuck in combat, but stuck in like a garden or whatever, but um, but yeah, so this is what it's coming down to really, it's insanely close. Ponce's final unit's got to hold this line. 
and just let Carthage just hammer an anvil. He's got to just constantly hammer an anvil and just hope. But they're going for the cap point. Those African pikemen, they're going for the cap point. I also think, well, her own nobles haven't moved yet, but they're going to do the same. They're just hoping that these units here can slow us down long enough that uh, they can take the cap point. And they might do it. They might actually just might come down to time. Like how long they can they can just but they've won again on that flank. I don't know what they broke. There was something here they broke, but they're now surrounding uh, Pontus. But there you go. The Carthaginian hoplites are gone, so it's now just the mercenary noble fires. Can we kill them? But Carthage's generals had to go on. He's had to go. He's got bigger plans. He's got to take out that pikeman. And there we go. I think the uh, look at them being forced over the fence, forced back through the fence, phasing through it. That's pretty pretty impressive. You can phase through a fence. <laughs> but yeah, so. I'm going to say the Mercenary Noble Fires have lost that. Pick Top Lights and uh, Pontic Swords. Yeah, they're, they're good. But I mean, yeah, this Pike unit here could do it. It might actually do it. I mean, if we get the General back on the cap point, I think we just... Um, we neutralize the cap, but right now he's going to do a smart thing. Defend this choke point with his Pikes. And so uh, he's having to go around and take out this Heroic Nobles. But now the pikes are on the move again. It's going to be really close. It's going to be insanely close. It's just unbelievable. And there we go. We've broken them in the courtyard. And so it's uh, just those final two units. So it's like a 3v2 currently. <laughs> in, and that's in units, not in armies. That's insane. I mean, if we had those two units there um, attacking us, we'd be done. This is GG, game over, but Kush is just stuck there on the walls and can't do anything. It's a bit of a shame, obviously. Don't obviously like having to see bugging out, but it's bugging out in our favour currently, so uh, I won't complain. That was a good charge for on the Heroic Nobles. It's got not a, not a bad charge at all, killing about 20 of them. Do it again. Just break through the line. Here we go. He's, he's going to just keep on doing this. Another great charge. Jeez, that's actually just wiped out the unit and most of them will get probably back up oh that guy just got kicked over by the horse that's nice i've never seen that before Heroic nobles 22 left yeah he killed like another 10 20. african pikes coming in now they're just going to defend this uh they're going to hold the cap point look they've taken it i think or they've uh i don't know they've certainly have taken it i think because it's gone red instead of light blue now they're just going to hide in this corner they're not even going to contest the cap point what are they doing? Oh, they're chasing down these hoplites. What a straight... What a bizarre thing this is. This is. Fighting in this weird garden. Oh, look at this guy. He's just chilling here. Doing his thing. Don't mind me. That's really cool, actually. There's a few more. Oh, I've got units dotted around here as well. These are... Picked hoplites from my general unit. They're just stuck here. Oh, I hate this. I hate this so much. And this Royal Pelt, there's so many units just stuck here. That's insane. What is going on? In all honesty, what is going on there? But here we go. I, I don't think... Um, don't think the uh, attackers are going to do it now. I hate to say it. That's the, Yeah, that's gone. There's now uh, two sword units. Well, a sword unit, a spear unit, and a cav unit against pikes. I mean, they're blocking themselves back in the thing. We neutralize the cap point and uh, we can just flank them around here and they can't they can't move anyway. They can't do any attack orders because it will be a big risk to them. Obviously they'll just get flanked. They're just going to stand here and hope. If we had Javis though, this would be huge. I don't know why it's all of a sudden just lagging. It's got plenty of... got no units on the battlefield now. Yeah, these units bloodied up so much. Caked in blood. And tomato ketchup. Yeah, they're slowly chopping these guys down on the flank. So it's helping. General, what you, you just give out some uh, abilities and you can probably just save the day. Well, no, you need to save the day. There we go. We'll just fast forward for the sake of the video. And, yeah, we're going to see African Pikes just die here. The cavalry's charging in. And they're slowly dying. Losing... Uh, Pontus is gone. Shame there, but it's going to just come down to Syracuse and Carthage. One more charge from the uh, Carthaginian cab will probably do the job. 
Um, can we have one more charge, please? I'd like one more charge. I request a charge. But there you go. Um, so the African Pike, they're about to waver and go. Not quite sure why that happened yet. There we go. All of a sudden. I had a perfectly good video and now you're jittering at the end. How rude. But uh, yeah, they're gone. So that's uh, GG and now it's just kind of just, I think the time's just running down. Just to wait until they uh, concede defeat. Just for uh, the armor show to worry. So we'll just uh, we'll just fast forward here. But yeah, and we'll see what happens. I don't, not much. I mean, actually, Mastodon's still technically alive as well. His hot plate's defending the garden. Those brave men, defending the garden to the last man. Um, but yeah, they actually are moving. They're actually getting off the walls. Um, but it's only like the small units. I think it's uh, the AI moving. And uh, deciding that it's, uh, well, it, it can. But yeah, I'm not quite sure what's happened here. There we go, costly victory, okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, for some reason, I'm not quite sure what happened, but it just all of a sudden just jitted out a little bit. But there we go. So, uh... We can now have a look at the end results. So, I mean, yeah, I was playing as Syracuse. Um, but, I mean, Aiden, who was playing as Pontus, getting the most kills, 3,273. Uh, That's very, very good. Um, yeah. Um, I was going to... Let let's see what he... His uh, Eastern Archers, 209. They did the best, I think. Um, 330 for his Pontic Swords. I mean, most of his Pontic Swords did excellent, actually. I mean, But, yeah, there you go. There's his end results. There are mine. I think that my best was obviously my picked hoplites getting 272 kills to my general. Uh, my pikes actually didn't do too bad on 236 and my 174. Then Matthew 20, who's playing as Carthage. Um, his elephants didn't do so well. 163. Not uh, great as they could be, but obviously um, they kind of just went out of control and committed seppuku on those pikes. Uh, and then African pikeman did 235. That's actually probably his best unit. Oh no. Bale X thing is 290. Excellent. Then Drunk Norwegian, who was playing as Mastodon, um, was probably the first player to go for Mastodon, but, I mean, he did well. He held his line, held the line and harassed Egypt to the very last moment. He actually didn't have a full stack either. Um, but his, uh, in, his archers didn't do that great. Um, his pikes, sh a shame. Foot companions didn't do as well as the, the money he spent on them. His uh, Royal Peltas 206 probably did the best. And, um, but yeah, he only slightly got uh, less kills than Carthage, who stayed around till the end. Anyway, the attacking Carthage army, um, best unit probably was those most noble fighters. Look at the amount of chevrons they started on. But yeah, 336. 739 for his pikes. Jeez, I didn't even see that. That's insane. That is very good. Then, uh, so well done to Papa Bear there. Then quadruple. Uh, I don't actually know. Quadruplet. I don't know. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Anyway, um, Chosen Sword Band did well. His heroic nobles. 170, and uh, yeah, they did very well. 180 for his Cav. Then Mr. Walrus, who was playing as um, Egypt, he did pretty damn well. His uh, Glacian Royal Guard, 254, which is actually probably the best unit there. Yeah, and then N, N Cowper, who was playing as Kush. Um, best unit was uh, Armature Warriors, probably, obviously, on 270, I think is the best, which actually is uh, pretty average for them. As uh, so, a probably say below par you're expecting them to hit the 300 it's not the pikes for carthage getting to 700 but anyway guys if you've enjoyed then please do leave a like subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment to show your support as well and let's try and hit four uh 1400 subs uh, i think we can do it so if you haven't subbed do remember to do so um if you want to see more epic siege battles and until next time legionnaires i will see you guys later